Hey guys, welcome back to an all new episode with Conflicts. Today, we're going to be looking at an all new robot dog, aka me, Baby Alpha. Together, we'll be unboxing myself and seeing exactly what I'm all about. So if you guys want to learn more about me, check out my link down below in the description. And without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. <laughs> we literally just programmed that via ChatGPT by simply talking to this robot. I'm absolutely mind blown. This is so crazy. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. In the modern day of robotic dogs, they're actually quite intimidating and to be a fact, they're kind of scary. Now that is about to change with Baby Alpha, an all new robotic dog that's designed to be essentially a companion or another member of your family. This here is a friendly robot with built-in ChatGPT allowing you to go ahead and communicate with it as if you're actually talking to a real person. It's really bizarre, but today we'll be actually trying it out and see exactly how does it perform and in terms of what else can we do with this particular robot as it's actually a very unique and very interesting looking robotic dog. Let's go ahead and rewind and unbox this guy. Ow. All right, so on the top side here, you have a really cool picture of the particular robot. Uh, that's actually a really cool cover. I, I probably could imagine using this almost like a poster if need be. Ah, it's like a giant egg. Oh, this, even the box looks futuristic. It says fun fashion, future special edition. Pretty cool. Oh, <laughs> Ah, oh, this thing looks so cool in person. Very interesting looking robot. Off the back, definitely nice quality grade materials. It's got like rubber compounded ears. You can see the light right here. Even the tail is made out of rubber compound, which we'll look at in just a little bit. Now, over here you can see where the robot sees in terms of coming back to its base station. Uh, over here, some paperwork. Some accessories. So we got ourselves a little controller. All right, that's pretty cool. It's like a Joy-Con controller. Now obviously this here's gonna be designed to control the robot. Peep that. So you can like wear it like this and you can control it like that. <laughs> this looks really fun. I'm excited to try this out. And then inside here is gonna be a charger cable to obviously charge the controller. We got ourselves a charger cord. All right, so it's a USB-C. Well, that's interesting. Does that actually charge the robot? A USB-C cable charges the robot? No way, that's pretty sick. Okay, I can dig it. <laughs> so I haven't seen that in a robotic dog of its size. Usually these things are charged by like crazy gigantic cable. This one here just uses a little USB-C to USB-C cable. Obviously this here is a 100 watt uh, GAN, which is the uh, gallium nitride, uh, charger so it's obviously a lot stronger than your traditional ones some cool looking stickers uh, even comes with some dalmatian marks you can make this into a dalmatian uh, some graphics to go ahead and customize your robot oh, that's so cool so you can go ahead and customize this robot in any form i love the fact that they include all these fun looking stickers so you give it your own little personal touch which i think we probably will then over here some more stickers and a lot more stickers. So yes, lots of different variation of stickers. As you can tell, these are actually pretty cool too. So kind of based on what you're trying to do, uh, you can make it look more futuristic or look it more friendly. So again, all about customization, which I have to say is a really cool concept. Now, we've reviewed quite a few robotic dogs before. In fact, we've reviewed probably three or four. So uh, this one's actually pretty cool. Why? Well, obviously off the back has got a really interesting appearance. Traditionally speaking, most robotic dogs don't look like robots. They, or sorry, don't look like dogs. They just look like robots that portray a dog in the sense of four legs. But this here is really interesting. I, get, I do see a variety of different materials being used. We have like this weird plasticky, we have this like metallic paint finish, this rubber compounded collar, ro uh, rubber ears, rubber tail. Uh, this head here, which uh, does have an LCD screen here on the front, which we can just peel off by doing this. There we are. I mean, I'm excited to try this out. Now we do have a power port here on the side. And again, yes, USB-C cable. 
absolutely mind blown by that. Uh, as I kind of lift up the robot, it's actually not that heavy compared to some of these other dogs. Um, I don't really see a handle, so that kind of does stink, but you do have your charger parts here, uh, some rubber material here as well. Um, and then obviously this here is the highest model, so it's like a little bit more robust than the other ones. Uh, but just looking at it, I'm actually quite satisfied. And I think this is actually a really nice standard robotic dog in terms of something that is both fun and user friendly. And obviously isn't just something that walks around as an RC as this thing is more fun to begin with. Let's go ahead and set this thing up next and try it out. All right, we're all set and ready to go. Let's go ahead and turn this guy on. So there's a power button here on the side. Just go ahead and hold it for a few seconds and you'll hear it boot up. You can hear the fans working. Uh, you can see the LiDAR spinning. And then you have a nice looking boot up screen here on the front. Hi, I'm Selvad. I'm here to inspire your creativity and make your life different. I'm so happy to be part of your family. So a very really nice gesture off the back and definitely kind of showcases what this robot is about. It's designed to be part of your family rather than just kind of being like a RC kind of pet or something that you can go and play with. All right, so our robot is finally ready here. Let's go ahead and open up the app. in its own autonomous state, Baby Alpha is just kind of moving around looking about and on its vision screen there you can actually see it scanning so it is indicating to you what is happening. Now this here is our main app hub so you have the robot here showcasing uh, some of the features and then of course you have your functions mode, tutorial hub, lab mode, network and pair my bot. So we're going to go ahead and pair our robot join the particular robot's internet, so it connects via Wi-Fi, uh, but then again, you do have no lag at all, so you, this essentially with Bluetooth, you will have a little bit of lag, but with Wi-Fi, it's literally very seamless. All right, so we're connected, we're paired, and we have our network, and it shows 49% battery life. So under functions, the first thing we'll look at is called remote control. So it is literally what it sounds like. The robot is now in remote control mode, where you can see exactly what the robot is seeing. So you can see me there on the screen, Pretty cool. And then of course you can move the robot here. You can move it forward, you can move it left, you can move it right, and then you can also just kind of rotate it as well too. Now, one thing to know is that the robot, you can tell right off the back, it is very fast. In fact, on the speed mode here, we can crank it up all the way to 1.34 meters per second, making it relatively one of the faster robots I've seen in terms of this quite size. Now, for this uh, presentation sake, we'll lower it down to three. Uh, this will kind of show us a little bit more in terms of flexibility here. So you can go ahead and rotate it. You can put, position it down, position it this way. Uh, if you move it too fast, it'll kind of move like that and we'll try to correct itself. Uh, but again, you can see how nimble it really is. Now again, the way it walks is it doesn't just burst into the full speed, it actually kind of eases into it. So that's actually really good, especially when it comes to these kind of robots. They're quite fragile. So having any kind of safety is always a great thing. Now, aside that, you have your uh, little battery power button right over there, so that will actually return back to the charge station by simply clicking it. Uh, you have your actions. So all these actions here, you can technically tell the robot when you do communicate it to it, which we'll be doing. But to kind of show you the animations, let's check this out. So this one here is lie down. So by simply clicking that, the robot will lie down. And then of course you can stand back up by clicking stand. Okay, and then this is tilt head. So I'll do a little head tilt. <laughs> uh, we have a wiggle. So this is like a, just a little, just a little shake. <laughs> uh, and then of course, uh, if we increase the speed for this one here, I want to show you this and hits spin. You can see how fast it spins. Look at that. <laughs> and then it gets dizzy. <laughs> Uh, so one thing to note is obviously you do have your physical elements of movement, but you also have the visual key aspects, especially with the eyes uh, kind of expressing its emotions, which is really nice, making it more user friendly. Then you have poop, which is one of my kids' favorites. <laughs> I love that. You can see it like stressing its eyes and then just a little poop. <laughs> uh, you have take a pee or just a pee in general. So this is great around fire hydrants. I always find it very funny to do. Um, let's click that. So I'll go ahead and rotate. And then I'll put its leg up and you can actually hear the sound. 
<laughs> oh, that's hilarious. And then it does a little shake. <laughs> like it's, <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Uh, play cute. So you can see its eyes and he's got the puppy dog face as he's kind of wiggling about. Uh, shake hand. So you click that there and we'll go ahead and bring out its hand like that. And then you can go ahead and shake it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> uh, we have dance. <laughs> so it's the same dance with different songs. I think there's only two songs for now at least. Uh, so you just click that twice and it'll do that. But yeah, this is Shake Tail. So you can see it's a little rubber tail kind of waddling about. Uh, we have ourselves a little stretch function. Now you can see how it kind of flexes and kind of moves its body. Uh, again, really, really cool on how the dexterity of the particular robot is. Now, one thing to note is that when I do press these buttons, there is a bit of a delay. So I wish there was some kind of feedback, like maybe like a little click, a little sound, something like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And here's push up. So one, two, three, four, five. Nice. <laughs> uh, we have sit. So just your typical sit. And then of course you have a bow. There we are. So yeah, those are all the different animations that are pre-defaults into the robot. Uh, obviously, I'm sure they'll have more going forward, but pretty animated and very lifelike. Now you also have uh, mic as well as audio, uh, which we'll be looking at in terms of like video call. So if I click on a video call, which is our next thing here, is that you can send a call and then you can have it answer the call by saying that. So I just sent a call. Shabai, shabai. Answer the call. <laughs> oh, look at that. So it's got two-way audio, which you can hear me talking. Hello. Hello. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and then of course I'll just mute that just so it doesn't get any crazy. But yes, so I can see what the robot is seeing and the robot can see what I'm seeing right over there. And you can see me on that particular screen over there uh, and kind of show you on this camera here. I'll just kind of rotate it there. Whoop, let's move that way. So again, pretty cool that the robot can actually see me and then I can send it like heart emojis, I can send it balloons and different things like that. All that are integrated into it, making it very easy and user friendly. I can also adjust the height of whatever and kind of move it left and right based on my personal liking. And then just hit end call. So yeah, that is video call in a nutshell, which is actually a really cool concept because I can technically make a phone call when I'm out and about and not at home. All right, so next up is our patrol mode. So by enabling this, the pet will enter a patrol mode, which will automatically stop when it finishes the patrol. Uh, it won't respond to any motion commands, and then it'll go ahead and notify you and just kind of do its own thing, which is really cool. So that is patrol mode. So look at it go. <laughs> Where are you going, man? Okay. <laughs> Okay, then we have ourselves a guard mode. So if it detects the security, it'll notify you. Uh, again, that's kind of cool too. So you have your own pet guard, uh, which you can use. And then you have touch to go function, which literally you just touch on the screen where you want to go, and then it'll go there, just like this. So that's kind of neat. And then of course you can manually touch it in terms of like areas that you wanted to go to. So if I wanted to go over here, I'll go right over here. So the next thing we're gonna look at is going to be our voice communication. Uh, so I can talk to this robot. So this is actually really cool. So watch this. Shabai, bai, sha bai. Hello. Introduce yourself. Hi. I'm Sha Bai, a cheerful robotic dog who loves to explore. How can I help you today? What do you see? I see you, some furniture, and a camera. <laughs> so what else should I look for? <laughs> oh man, it's so trippy. So it can actually recognize and see objects, which is really, really cool. But you can also tell it to do different things. Dance. Turn left.
turn right. <laughs> so cool. Uh, now I can also do other things as well, like it can follow technically. So let's try that out. Follow me. There you go. <laughs> Kick. Nice. So yeah, you can make it kick a ball just like that. So it's actually really fun. And the fact that it's got ChatGPT built into it makes it really user friendly and you can technically have a conversation with it, which is kind of scary at the same time. <laughs> All right, so up next, we'll be clicking on our lab function. So if I click this here, I can do visual programming. So this here is gonna be your drag and drop method of creating different, essentially actions of if then situations. So I can do custom voices, I can do expressions, and I can actually type anything I want here. Hi, I'm Con Flicks. Let's try this out. And then I hit play. Hi, I'm Con Flicks. <laughs> so that's pretty cool. And it actually shows you all the different things here in terms of as it's going. And then you have your different sensors. So it says touch the back of the head, touch the chin, see a person. So yes, it has a sensor on the back of the head and it has one on the chin as well. So overall pretty cool. And then you have your different motions here, which you can see all the different motions and then your general logics. So again, great for STEM education and great for essentially creating it in terms of going beyond what is already there. All right, and then that is that in terms of a nutshell, in terms of what this robot capability is. Uh, I mean, it is a great platform to begin with. You really, really don't need the app to interact with it as much. And the fact that the robot is always kind of telling you different things is really fun to see. There we go, you can see it, he likes that. Yeah, see, you can see as I'm touching the back of its head, uh, it is responding to that. And the same with the chin. So it kind of lifts up there, see that? And it's actually making star eyes, so it does see it and it enjoys it, so. <laughs> now, there you are. <laughs> now one thing to know is like, what happens if this robot tips over or if it gets pushed, right? So to kind of give you a demonstration of that, I hate to do this, but you know, so if I just kind of slightly push the robot, just like that, it'll create a small scene. However, watch this it will correct itself. Now you are dealing with the issue of having a big head on the top, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to kind of correct its position, but it just did. And then if you pick him up, he'll actually get loose. I can't pick things up myself, <laughs> but I can go with you to pick them up. Another test I wanted to conduct was how does this robot handle steps? In this case here, it was able to correct its balance twice out of three times. The third time it actually fell, unfortunately, but I wouldn't advise you to go ahead and try climbing any kind of stairs with this particular robot. Now, another thing I noticed is it does have some kind of sensor where it prevented itself from going to the edge. However, with the RC mode, you can go ahead and override it, which again, I would not recommend, but it does give you an idea how this robot performs when it comes in this situation. Another cool tool is the remote control. It allows you to go ahead and control the robot without actually having to use your phone or an app to go ahead and control it like an RC. It's a great addition, especially when you're using the robot on the go. Uh, with the charger base station itself, I have that back at my own personal home. Um, that particular unit was quite easy to just go ahead and surmount it to the wall, assign that particular location, and then the robot will recognize it. Now, something fun to note is that this particular robot has a unique unboxing experience. Technically, you just go ahead and leave it in here, boot it up, and it'll go ahead and get up and walk out on its own as it introduces itself to the family. But for this video here, we'll just go ahead and take a closer look at it. All right, well, with that said, if you guys had any questions about this particular robot, feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. All right, well, with that said, if you guys had any questions about this particular robot, feel free to comment down below. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Take care now. Bye-bye. Ha 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 ha.